have been listening to too many Paula White and Kenneth Copeland's and of the world and this, that, and the other, they think it's all about money. It's not about money. It's all about what is taking care of those around you. It's the ecclesia. It's, it's the remnant. The church is not the remnant. If you're in the system, you are not the remnant. I don't care what these false prophets and false pastors say. That is the pot calling the kettle black right there, Mark Taylor. Hey everybody, it is I, Gary Schumacher, and I am back, as you can see, with my old studio here, with the backdrop and everything like that, because I want to go old school, because Mark Taylor is back from out from under his rock, and he is old school as they come, old school false prophet, who now seems to be out there calling out false prophets himself, and it's absolutely ridiculous, this guy. So, uh, you know, I guess, you know, calling the 2020 election for Donald Trump, we just, we're going to forget about that and all the other uh, false prophecies he's put out. And uh, I really thought maybe he saw the error of his ways and he just turned around and said, well, I'm not really a prophet. I'm not going to do this anymore. But he is back and he is back with the same rotten rhetoric. And now he is with this creature here, Michelle Moore, because him and his old brother from another mother, Chris McDonald, had a parting in the ways. So I am going to cover this guy. I am going to cover this guy as much as I can. Being thou that I have more subscribers than Chris McDonald has. And, you know, that is the funny part about it because Chris McDonald told me on his show that I my channel was nothing, I was a nothing, and now I have more subscribers than he does. So you better be careful what you say to people, Chris McDonald, because sometimes those things will come back to bite you. Now, that is on his religious program channel, on his um, political channel, because he's more political than he is godly. Um, he is... He's trouncing me. He's got like 40,000 subscribers on that. So that really shows you where his bread is buttered on, okay? But I don't mean to go off on a tangent on Chris McDonald. I am here to cover his ex-brother from another mother, Mark Taylor. So uh, I'm going to play a clip here uh, and uh, gear up. Here he's, he's coming back at you with the same 501c3 rhetoric he did before. The bottom line is this, is that any church that's under a 501c3, the head of that church is not Jesus Christ. It's not Yeshua, period. It is Baal, and it is the Baal Babylonian system, and they are fornicating with the whore of Babylon like the Bible talks about through the 501c3 system. I mean, we can sit here and go on and on and on, so I'm going to point people to that right there uh, for the most part. So, yeah, this is what he does now. He's still got the same rhetoric about the 501c3, and I'm not a big fan of 501c3s as well. So he just gets, he guess he's just plugging this website here, hushmoney.org, which I will check out as a matter of fact. But um, he is just, he's incredible with his his logic. All right. I went to that website over the weekend, and it is loaded with information mind-blowing it's mind-blowing yes. yeah and very understandable very simple yep. uh it was very it, very well done so yes. I, I highly recommend it as well all right we got another uh email that came through the website and it says uh, michelle i've been listening to mark taylor for the past four or five years and oh, that poor creature whoever she is if you've been listening to Mark Taylor for the last four or five years, you really need to step away and start reading your Bible. By you having him on your show, it has stirred up the 501c3 controversy within my soul. I am in the process of leaving my church, but I serve and volunteer. So my question is, is it wrong to serve the body of church, even, I mean, the body of Christ, even though I uh, don't go to church there. Thank you. So, and, and I love your shows. So 
the uh, so what she's saying is is it wrong to continue to go to that church and serve uh, but she doesn't she's not a member there anymore right the good news is this is that she's saying that it's stirring her soul now why is that it's because there's a part of her mm-hmm. that the lord is saying to come out of her don't be a part of her any longer so that's the good news the 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 kind of I'm not say bad news, but the, the the kind of opposite news is she's she's fighting it a little bit, and it's because she's wanting to stay there and still serve. There's a part of her, and it's not conscious; it's subconscious. It's probably going on. And all this is happening in the spirit. So the good news is you're 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 fighting to get out. You've gotten out of some of it, but you're still serving a corrupt system, if you will. And so, so what he's saying is that because the church is a 501c3, which gives them tax exemption. Um, then they're just a horrible place. They're a horrible church. God doesn't dwell there. A ball dot dwells there. And, you know, God, the last time I checked, God is everywhere. Okay. Um, and this man right here is just, he puts the smack down on any church, any church at all that would get a tax exemption but you can't it's almost like you can't serve mammon and you can't serve the uh god at the same time it's kind of like one of those things you have to pick one or the other and and this there's no condemnation in this because we've all been through this uh we're all a lot of people are still going through this right now at least you're that far ahead of the game where you've come out of the 501c3 but on the other hand you're still serving a corrupt system what you're doing is you're actually aiding and abetting a corrupt system now, I've heard this rhetoric from him for years and years now. And um, he, what he says, the reason why the 501c3 churches are so bad is that the government tells them what they can preach from the pulpit. Now, I don't know what proof he has of this, that the, the, uh, that the government, I guess, comes into the church every Sunday and says, let me, okay, Reverend, let me see your, your, uh, your sermon here. Oh no no you can't you can't say that you can't preach the gospel no if you preach the gospel then we're going to cut off your 501c3 so basically and this is what I'm talking about with Mark Taylor he's a conspiracy theorist what he what he does is pushes this rhetoric he thinks that the government is controlling the church through their t- tax exemption and the thing about him and every other false prophet and conspiracy theorist is that they don't have to show any proof where this man's proof is he doesn't show it and if you notice down here at the bottom now it does say um his name is lieutenant mark taylor now he's a retired fighter fire firefighter but when he was on chris mcdonald's show he was prophet mark taylor so um he's kind of shaking off that title is if you leave this system now because that's the only that's what's going to make this system collapse basically if you will is because god's going to take the religious tower down and those who serve under the Baal babylonian system under this religious tower so you don't want to be a part of it you don't want to be any part of it right now when god takes it down and the judgment hits okay all right so uh another email that we received and Let's see here. Actually, that may belong to another part, so we'll come back to that. Okay, so uh, a viewer comment left on last week's show. If you leave the 501c3 church, where does Mark or you suggest that we find teachings as that voids most of the online services? In other words, most online services are part of a 501c3 church. He used to say go to Chris McDonald, but he's not saying that anymore, are you, Mark? it's very interesting, Mark, if you think about it, and I think that's, that causes um, really me to pause and go, wow, because this goes back to so many things that are elevated in our society, in our world, yep. tend to not be the good stuff, right? right? Right, exactly. So, you know, in Exodus 23, 8, it says, and you will not take a gift, that means bribe, for a gift, a bribe, blinds the eyes of the wise and perverts the words of the righteous. Perverts means to alter something from its original course, meaning, or state to a distortion or corruption of what was first intended. Now, I'm going to go back to, uh, you know, why is the 501c3 so bad? Um, I'm going to go back to, like we talked about last week, I'm going to take this this 
thing of water right here that I drink during the show, right? Mm -hmm. If I take this water, and it's 100% pure water, right? I fill it all the way to the top. If I put one drop of a chemical in this, would I drink this water? Because there are some chemicals that can kill you in one drop. Would I drink this water? No, absolutely not. Why? Because the one drop has now contaminated the entire thing. And the problem is this. If we don't have the discernment, uh, Michelle, because most of us don't right now, uh, have the discernment to pick out of a message. Oh, I have the discernment, Mark. Mark, I remember a prophet of God back in 2020 that predicted a landslide victory for Donald Trump. Hmm, who was that prophet of God? I know, it was you, Mark Taylor. And you're going to talk about discernment now, huh? Well, 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 that is the, the pot calling the kettle black there, Mr. Taylor, don't you think? What message is 100% true? What message is 99% true? I know a message that was 100% wrong, and that was your prophecy of the 2020 election. Just to mention one of many false prophecies that you doled out to your naive public. Well, I was one of them, and I'm no longer naive, and I am going to call you out every chance I get. 1%, that one drop, that contaminates the entire thing, and that's what God's talking about here in Exodus. When, you, when you're under the 501c3, you take a bribe. You're taking a bribe to keep your mouth shut about certain issues, whatever the case may be. So, and it blinds the eyes of the wise. It's, it's blinding people, it's deafening them, and it's muting them in the spirit. But it it's perverts the words of the righteous. What does pervert mean again? It means alter something from its original course, meaning, or state to a distortion of corruption of what was first intended, which means it's, it's your message has now been corrupted. So they've taken a bribe. It does all these different things just from taking a bribe. And this is many things now. This is, this is more than just one thing on the 501c3. But again, would you drink from something that's been contaminated? The same thing happens in the spirit when you're giving revelation, supposed revelation, or a message that you're supposed to be drinking. This is the milk, right? The drinking or eating, if you will. Would you eat a steak right now that had that same contaminant on it? No, absolutely not. You're going to throw that steak out. He's something else, isn't he? So the little drop of water in there, that's contaminated. Oh, but it's okay for you to give false prophecies back in 2020 about the election or talk about um, how there was going to be thousands of indictments coming down and all of these Democrats were going to be arrested and locked up. And let's talk about the other uh crazy false prophecy that you put out about uh, John McCain and how he was actually taken away uh, behind everyone's back and hung for treason, even though he died from, uh, I believe, uh, cancer, brain cancer. All these crazy conspiracy theories that this man had came out with. He, all When these indictments didn't come, oh no, these are secret indictments. These people are being tried in a military tribunal and hung and none of us are, are know about it because it has to be secret. How about those, Mark? Have you forgot about those? I didn't. And you know what? I can find them all. I really can. You were really, really out there. But then the 2020 election came and that just, you know what? That pulled the curtain back. And now you're back after all this time just like in The Wizard of Oz, telling, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. Well, we pull, we pull the curtain back on you, Mr. Taylor, and we are exposing you for everything that you ever have. If I have to come out here every single week and do a heretic hump day on Mark Taylor to prove to everyone that you're a fraud, then that's exactly what I'm going to do. You have to be able to discern what's correct. But the problem is God's telling us right here in his own word, it has perverted the words of the righteous. So why would we ever even entertain it in a million years? Why would I feed my soul or my spirit something that's been contaminated? The same. You want to talk about contaminated. Let's talk about your false prophecies. I mean, shall we, Mark? The reason I wouldn't feed my body something that's been contaminated. It happens in the spirit. What happens in the physical happens in the spiritual, spiritual and physical. It's back and forth. So you have to find a source that is completely clean. 
that is not a 501c3 that is uh, biblically correct, and that's what you're going to have to stick with. And right now, I don't know where to send people, Michelle. We're he doesn't know where to send people. All these years hanging around with all these ministers and all these so-called prophets of God, and he doesn't know where to send anybody now. Right there, that should make you give you some discernment here. So I got this uh, video clip from my good friend, uh, Matthew 715. So I want to give him a plug for his channel <clears throat> and, and go over there and check out his channel. But when I want to show you a clip here, we're going to do a real big throwback that uh, Matthew was nice enough to put down here. We're going back to the right, olden so days. We're going to learn how to spot these wolves in sheep's clothing together. The first way to spot a false, spot a false pastor or prophet, P-R-O-F-I-T, is simple. Ask one question. I want to ask one question, Mark. You're supposed to be this almighty prophet of God, but you're wearing a hat that says Trump 2020 on it. And you're sitting next to a man. I don't even want to get started on this man that's sitting next to you, who actually now has disowned you and doesn't want anything to do with you because you called him out for what he surely was. But uh, uh, let me play on so, so the little throwback here in case you folks don't remember Mark Taylor's past. Are they a 501c3? See, He's been doing this 501c3 jargon for a long time. There it is. The Lord told me a while back that 501c3 ministries are the altars to Moloch and Baal. Okay? The Lord told my head intercessor, Melissa Leggett, that the sacrifice to Moloch and Baal was their congregations. And by the way, him and Melissa Leggett have soon as well part of company. Let me say that again. The 501c3 ministries are the altars to Baal and Moloch. And you, the congregation that is attending that 501c3, are the sacrifice. Okay? Let's go into this a little more. Uh, Baal, Baal was their congr congregation. This is why the Lord had me screaming from the rooftops to not walk but run from any 501c3 ministry. I don't care how bit, how uh, who they are or how big their name is or their title. They are defiled, and so are their words. It doesn't matter how accurate they fit, you think they are. Why would we ever support such a thing? There are two kinds of people that support them. One, those who truly, uh, who are truly blind and cannot see the truth in front of them. And two, those that have heard the truth but do not want to see the truth. That is hysterical right there. That is just too much to handle, isn't it? There he is. Back before the 2020 election, because he's still wearing his 20, Trump 2020 hat, getting everybody to believe that he's a mighty prophet of God and has predicted a re-election for Donald Trump on the <coughs> Matt Files program with his brother from another mother. And Chris McDonald just sits there, sits there and shakes his head and agrees with every single thing he says. And in the meantime... Mark Taylor is no more of a prophet than Cat Kerr or Robin Bullock or anything like that, any of those people. And it's pathetic that he's back. I really thought that maybe a firefighter, you know, would probably say, you know what, I, I'm really not a prophet. I didn't get the 2020 election and all these crazy conspiracy theories that I came up with. They were all wrong, too. But I need money. So... I'm going now I have to go back out and start doing this again because there's a lot of naive Christians out there with big checkbooks and they don't seem to care. They don't seem to care that I'm not a prophet of God. They want their steak and eat it too according to what he says. He doesn't they don't seem to mind that Mark Taylor's putting poison on their steak. They're going to eat it anyway. And it's a very sad state of affairs. When he stopped coming around for the last year, I actually started to grow just a little bit of respect for him. But now, not anymore. He's just as bad as he was before with his conspiracy theories. And people, come on. If you're still listening to this man, you have to stop. You have to stop. He is regurgitating the same silly rhetoric he did on the Chris McDonald show four, 
six years ago, eight years ago. I mean, right after he, Chris McDonald grabbed a hold of him as soon as uh, Trump was elected president and they made that movie about him and the book and the whole nine yards. But what nobody knew and they weren't telling you is that he didn't predict the 2016 election. He predicted Trump would be president in 2012. OK, and every couple of years since the 1980s, they were talking about this man being president. I could show you a clip Oprah Winfrey show from back in the 80s when she asked, would he ever run for president? And his answer was. They just move on down the road. They don't talk about it ever again. They just move on down the road and they just keep on with uh, the next prophecy, the next bag of lies they tell. That's how they operate. That's how a grifter works. And they never put themselves in a situation where they're outside the bubble of protection like the Sid Roth show or, or anything like that. They would never go on Dateline or, or, or CNN or MSNBC or Fox News and be interviewed by someone who's not going to feed them softball questions. No way. No way could they answer these tough questions about, well, you know, you, you predicted the 2020 election and that didn't come to pass. You said that John McCain was uh, tr tried by a military tribunal and executed. That's... Where's your proof, Mark? See, that's the other thing when you say, and God saith so. That's it. That, that's it. Their hands are clean now. And when they finish a sentence with, thus saith the Lord. Okay? But they don't have to answer for it on this planet. But when they move on to the next life, there's going to be somebody there they're going to have to answer for. And if they honest and truly believed in God, knowing that one day they're going to stand in front of him and have to answer for these lies that they've told, for answer for the people whose bank accounts they've built because they trusted them that they were speaking to God because they are naive, then that would be enough for them to stop this. There ain't a one of them that are true believers in God. Not this guy, not your Cat Kurz, not your Robin Bullocks, not any of them. Because if they had any, and I'll use a word he just used, discernment, they wouldn't be doing this. Because they can't believe their own rhetoric. They just can't. Not at this point in the game. They don't. They have to come up with, concoct different ideas to... to um, cover their prophecies when they don't come true. I mean, look at what they did after the election. Oh, they kicked the ball down the court a couple of months while he raking some more money. Yeah, Trump's going to be put back in office. They're going to find out that the election was, wasn't was real, and he's going to be reinstated in July, in August, in September, in 2023. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Come on, people. This is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous, and it has to stop. Uh, don't listen to this man. He is um, just out there to pick your pocket yet again. Okay, so let me get back to heckle and jekyll here for a minute, okay? So uh, Mark uh, Taylor and Chris McDonald are, are talking about this 501c3, and uh, listen to what Chris McDonald says here. It's inspiring here god's gonna send you back ten thousand or he'll he'll pay you bills and all right. this and you said something right. uh a year ago mark maybe two years but it's stuck with me and, and it made a lot of sense and i wanted to reiterate this tonight since we're on this subject look if you're already in a curse system you are basically you would be better off to take that hundred dollar seed that you're giving to these ministries like that and go to your bathroom in there and put that hundred dollar bill in that toilet and flush it because the, the chance of a return when you're putting it into a curse system 
is about as good as it will be if you flush that money down that toilet. And that's all he cares about is when you put money, when you sow a seed, that you get a a return on your investment. That's what all of these big time, um, you know, mega churches try to sell you is that you're going to, if you give me a hundred dollars, God will give it back to you tenfold. If you give me a thousand dollars, God will return your, it's a return on your investment. When you are sowing a seed to a church, all right, when you're giving a donation to a church, you're giving it out of the goodness of your heart. You're not, I never ever put money in a collection plate at the church expecting anything back ever. My parents didn't raise me that way. We're giving the money to God and hoping that that money winds up in a good place, like helping the poor, uh, get people off the street, um, maybe helping a, a, a child or a, a mother, a single mother, something like that. Well, I'm not looking for uh, something back, and you shouldn't be either. And that's what these people in these types of charismatic churches sell to their congregation, that you're going to get something back. You are going to get something back. It's called God. It's called his grace. It's called his love. And you don't have to buy it. He gives it to you for free. It's free. You don't need to pay for it. But your Chris McDonald's and your Mark Taylor's of the world, they think and they think they know that if you sow a seed, you're going to get something back in return financially. All right. You don't need anything back financially. You're already blessed that you're able to give to the church, that you're able to help some people. Don't give your money to people like this. Give your money to a homeless shelter. Give your money to a drug rehabilitation center. God doesn't say you have to give your money to the church. You want to give your money to the church so they can help spread the gospel, sure. But if you're giving your money to this nonsense, this right here, take a look at this. This is nonsense. Don't give your money to this. This man on the right here, Chris McDonald, I've, if you've watched my program, I've had a couple of ladies in here that have worked with him and they own their own, they have their own channels now and they're exposing him for what he was or is. I wish he would have taken the money that they gave him and flushed it down the toilet instead of what he actually did with it, according to these ladies. Okay. So please, please people. Don't give your money to these people. And he always and you're talking about the 501c3. Listen, I'm not a big fan of this 501c3 program because they, they give it to everybody. They'll give it to the churches. They'll give it to Scientology. They'll give it. But this man has no proof that they're telling these preachers what to preach if they're a 501c3 church. I don't see. Where is his proof? Show me the proof. He has no proof. They None of them ever have to answer to parishioners, but they will answer to God one day. That's so good. G Pat one says, um, Mark, my husband thinks 501c3 just means that they don't pay taxes. I told him it opens a door to government manipulation. She's it opens right many doors. It opens yeah. many doors. And the problem is this, is that it's not just a door to government manipulation. You are serving another God. People don't understand that. When you walk under a church with a steeple, that's a, that's a Masonic symbol. It is a, a phallic symbol to Baal. When you're walking under a 501c3, this is why the Lord told me years ago. He so when you walk into a church with a steeple, that's a symbol? Come on, Mark. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You. <sighs> he said, I don't want you even stepping foot in a 501c3. Why? Because Exodus 23.8 now comes into play. Because it will pervert your words, and it will literally, uh, it will blind you and pervert your words. He said, don't even step foot in one. So I can't even go into one. Now, that's what the Lord told me. That may not be for everyone, but that's what the Lord told me. Just like <laughs> He is unbelievable, isn't he, folks? All right, so I've done a little research on 501c3s. Like I said, I, I'm not crazy about them because they'll give 
a tax exemption to just about everybody. Um, but here's who they give tax exemptions to. Religious organizations, scientific research, okay? So things like, you know, drug research for cancer and for other uh, incurable diseases, they'll give tax breaks for, okay? These are horrible things, according to Mark Taylor. Um, public, safe, public safety testing, they give a uh, tax exemption for. Literary, books and things like that. Educational tax exemption. Fostering national and international amateur sports. But according to Mark Taylor, all these things are of bail. Um, preventing of cruelty to animals and children. Why they put those two things together, I have no idea, but that's how it was written. And it's and charities. These are charities. I mean, come on, these are charitable organizations they're giving tax credits for. And according to him, because of the number 501 and a C and a 3, somehow this is demonic. I'm sorry, Mark, I, I disagree with you. And you need to stop slamming this thing. Charitable organizations do great things. They help find cures for things like doing medical research like cancer, which I just want to say tonight that I have uh, my wife's sister, Stacy, who I want to say a prayer for as we close tonight, um, is battling her second round of cancer. And uh, she just got out of surgery today and um, she's in recovery. And it's things like a 501c3 charitable organization that help do research for things like this. Don't let a Mark Taylor brainwash you against these type of things. I don't know what his problem is with this. It is just a government thing for tax exemption. This has no ties to Satan or bail, like he likes to use that term all the time. There is nothing like that. All right. There I, I did I did a lot of research on this today. There there is no thing out there that shows that they are telling preachers what to preach from the pulpit. Now are there bad preachers out there? Yes, there's also good preachers out there who may belong to a 501c3. So you're going to tell everyone, Mark Taylor, not to belong to a church because they're taking a tax exemption. That is ridiculous okay there is a lot of good things that these uh these uh 501c tax exemptions do for people here's okay. the rules uh for the 501c3 the purpose of the organization should be exclusively charitable okay number two no part of the activities nor earnings should be benefited by any officer or private individual. Why don't you go ask Robin Bullock? He's not a 501c3, but he's benefiting, isn't he? All right. These are under, maybe they're under government scrutiny is so that people like your Robin Bullocks and your Cat Kerrs and your Kenneth Copelands don't run amok with the church's money. Okay, maybe you ever stop to think of that while you're running around saying that the all the, that the 501c3s are for bail? Come on, Mark. When was the last time you cured cancer? When was the last time that you gave a charitable donation? All I see you doing is pushing your book and movie and going on your talk show rounds, which I'm sure you get paid very well for, to tell your band of lies. So... I'm going to wrap it up for tonight. I, and like I said earlier, I want to say a prayer for my, my sister-in-law, Stacy, who I hope she's recovering well. And I hope she's watching t tonight because I'm, my wife's telling her that we're going to send a prayer um, uh, request out for her tonight. And if you're, if you're hearing this tonight, please say a prayer for my sister-in-law, uh, Stacy, who I never really see as a sister-in-law. I always looked at her as, as a sister. I've been married to her sister for going on 33 years now so i know her a very long time and i love her dearly she's a very dear sweet person in my life so let's bow our heads heavenly father thank you for bringing us 
all here again. And Lord, I say a special prayer tonight for my sister-in-law, Stacy, that you put your healing hands upon her as she struggles with a second round of cancer and a second round of chemotherapy. She really needs you, Lord. She's struggling and the whole family is behind her and we need to send strength out to her because we love her very, very much and we need to keep, we want her to keep on going. And Lord, thank you so much for all your wonderful blessings. And with that, I pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, folks, that is going to do it for tonight. Three. Okay? Don't listen to people like this. Okay? Listen to your heart. Because this right here does nothing but lie. God bless you, and have a great rest of your night. Take care now. Bye-bye. It's time.